Everybody, it's 8 o'clock Sunday night, and we are live. This is Tasting the Heat, and I've got a very special guest on. We got Eddie Ojeda from Twisted Sister. He's going to be talking about his fantastic hot sauces, Twisted Sauces. They're some of the best I've ever had, and Eddie's going to be live right here on the show. So without further do- delay here, let's get right to Eddie. Uh, let me bring him on. Um, is we there? Are we there? There we are. Okay, we got you. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, Eddie? I really appreciate you being on the show tonight. This is awesome. Sure, sure. I mean, uh, great day for it. I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. First of all. Oh, absolutely, man! Happy Father's I Day. I hope they all had a great uh, Father's Day, and you know the kids bought them more than socks. <laughs> Socks are a tie, right? <laughs> My son bought me a bottle of wine, at least, you know. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm making sure we are on right now. I'm, I'm loading everything up on here. We good? Okay. We are live. Um, My wife just gave me the sign that everything's good. So, you had a great Father's Day, and uh, yeah. uh, you got your son there with you. I was just uh, seeing him helping you get on the show here. That's awesome. Now... I've talked to you throughout the week, and uh, it's been about your hot sauces and stuff. How did you get into making hot sauces? Well, it was one of these things. Uh, it was something I always wanted to do. Uh, can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah, you're fine. Okay. Yeah, and um, a friend of mine, John Rosati, uh, Rosati Sauces. Yeah. He, you know, he's always been making more wing sauce. He made a lot of different wing sauces. So just kind of kidding around. Uh, you know, I used to eat cherries because I had gout for a while, and the cherries would help with uh, with the gout, which was kind of weird. So I would eat a lot of cherries. So I said to him, you know, I'd like to do a hot sauce, but something different. Like, is there a cherry hot sauce? And he said, actually, there's not. You know, he says, because uh, he's pretty much an expert on that and uh, a great cook. Um, so, you know, we sort of, he helped me out with it. We were sort of went back and forth. Uh, adding different ingredients to make it, to get it just right. Uh, so uh, we both, you know, he helped me with, with all three sauces, and his stuff is great too, you know. So that's how it happened. It was just sort of a thing, and I, and I didn't really, I said, you know, I want my own hot sauce. I'll just, you know, make a certain small batch just to have for myself, my friends, you know, and see what happens. So... I just got a great reaction from so many people that I decided to just, you know, start selling it. And then, you know, it actually turned into a business, which is pretty cool. And then, I, you know, I got some advice that you should do a couple of more flavors. So we went to work on uh, the peach and the apple, you know, the peach reaper, which is hotter. Yeah. This is like a five. Um, and the reaper is like an eight. And the, the, the apple is a mild. It's very mild. I mean, some people want killer heat. I didn't want to do like a 10 or, you know, from 1 to 10, 10 being in, insanely hot. Uh, because to me, it's got to be edible. You know? Right, um, right. But some guys, you know, for, you, for the average person, I've, I've seen people like die on the on the cherry. Like, oh, my God, that's so hot. But for most hot sauce lovers, that you know, like you, you hit it right on the nose when you, you know, put it at a, at a five. And you put the Reaper at a seven. To me, it's more like an eight. And you, you also uh, said the um, apple was a three, heat-wise. So I felt you nailed it, you know. And but you're, a, you know, and you're a serious hot sauce guy. So uh, you know, I sort of went that route. Um, I know there's still a few, a few people that there was one guy I got a, a message from and i think maybe he bought the apple by mistake because he said it didn't have it was sweet and didn't have much heat and that's the carolina reaper <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you know that's like the hottest pepper in the world right now you know right. uh ed curry you know created that of course you know uh, right pucker box strain. yeah in fact he gave me a baggie of uh, the powder which is funny, you know, back in the days when people gave me a baggie, it wasn't, you didn't have <laughs> hot pepper powder in it. You had to hide you know? that baggie. <laughs> <laughs> it was salt. It looked like salt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was salt. 
<laughs> have you so always it's... loved hot sauces and uh, spicy food? Is that is that something that you've always uh, uh, kind of uh, got yeah, into? Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm, I'm Latin, Latino, so I've always brought up with uh, eating spicy foods, and, you know, I put a lot of different, uh, like, hot sauces. I've been just doing it, you know, for years, you know, and I didn't... Uh, didn't think of making one until I to spoke with my friend, and he says, "Yeah, why don't you do one?" And, and it sort of uh, turned out great. And now it's like really good because the band's not touring anymore, so I can spend more time with this. Uh, you know, I'm meeting a lot of foodies, and that's really cool, like chefs and things. And uh, you know, going to different restaurants, meeting a lot of cool chefs. I was on Chopped, you know. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, it's really a fun thing, you know. It's it's enjoyable. I mean, what's better than you know food and friends and drinks? You know, that's uh, what life is all about. Absolutely, so, I got to see your episode on Chopped. That that was pretty uh, good. That was awesome. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I I, I like that uh, fact that a, a rock and roller loves to jam. <laughs> Damn right! I got carried away, but you know you can't write that stuff. No, like, I no. Did it, I, we did it with the jam, but then I sort of said, well, I can make a joke. And that just was completely spontaneous. I said, I better stick to this jam more than that jam, you know. <laughs> and it was, turned out to be really funny. At first, I was like, oh, boy. And then everybody just told me how hysterical it was. And, uh, you know, comedy-wise, it was really funny. And it was completely spontaneous, one of those things. Um, in fact, when I walked off, they had to shoot it three times because I kept going the wrong way. <laughs> Because you got to go down and they have that door that closes, that right. chops you, you know. And I kept walking down the whole thing. And and, the, and what's funny about Chop is people think, they don't realize there's four guys with cameras in front of each person. So you can't walk around the front. You know, you got an army of guys with cameras. Uh, and every time you're doing something, they're like on top of you. It's, it's a bit difficult to do, but definitely a blast. I mean, I love doing it, you know. And... Uh, you know, some of the, the celebrity chefs that were there were, were great, you know. So it was, it was a, lot of, a lot of fun. Well, you were on with uh, Alita Ford. Uh, yeah, Alita. Uh, 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 Zappa. Weasel Zappa. Weasel Zappa. And, and um, uh, Ke- Kelly, Kelly Hansen. Kelly Hansen. Yeah. Right, from uh, Foreigner. Right. No, it was a great episode, and uh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh Earlier, when you'd said to me, uh, "You'll get it when you're seeing it," it was like immediate. Yeah, he likes to jam. I loved it. It was a great show. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it, like you said, spontaneity of of things that is just so much fun, and, and it works out so much yeah. better than trying to uh, make something, you know, a stick that that you pre planned or something. So it was really yeah. a good show. It was very. And had I not overdone it with the jam, because that was one of the ingredients, I right. wouldn't have been able to to make a joke out of it. So. Right. It was pretty cool. Well, it was a great show. You know, your uh, Peach uh, Carolina Reaper, um, I I even put that on cottage cheese because I love the uh, peach with the cottage cheese. And, you know, you don't put a lot on it. And uh, it's like a fruit and cottage cheese. It's just such a uh, great mixture because your fruit is or your peach is so fresh tasting. And that's one thing about all three of your sauces is that the fruit is so fresh take, tasting. Uh, you guys, you just nailed it on on the, uh, the thanks, flavors thanks. of it. And the uh, the cherry habanero, I uh, uh, put a few drops in uh, vinegar and oil and use it for a salad dressing. Great flavor. Yeah. Great yeah, flavor. people have done done that. I also, you know, sometimes I mix it with ketchup. Okay. You know, or different uh, other different sauces. You know, it's not a question of going like like you said with the Reaper. You don't have to go nuts with it. You know, um, one there was one guy that did a YouTube video, and he was from the South, and it's just a great YouTube uh, review that he did because he's got that real strong Southern accent. And he's like, oh, man, I love your hot sauce, you know, and he's like, I felt like I was talking to one of the guys in Leonard Skinner. You know? so, <laughs> so he he took a whole bottle of the apple and poured it all over a slice of pizza. So that's the thing about the apple. You can you can kind of really go crazy with it. With the other, you know, the other ones, you just can add it to, you know, like you said, different uh, salad oils or sauces just to heat the, heat things up a little bit tomato sauce right just anything you know it mixes well with a with a lot of different foods and um you know if you don't want it that hot you just use a little bit sometimes sometimes i put a little too much myself 
But, um, you know, I try to uh, keep it to a nice balance because sometimes, you know, when I eat too much hot sauce, you know, it kind of burns on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a, it's got a double duty. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to do it. Double yeah. duty. Yeah. <laughs> now, if, if, uh, when you were on the road a lot, did, uh, were you into spicy food? Did you, uh, make sure that there were stuffed, uh, uh sauces or anything? Um, when I could, you know, a lot of times, um, it depends if we ate at the gig, you know, they always have like catering mm-hmm. and they, you know, they usually just have the, the, the regular Tabasco, you know, and uh, they didn't really have like specialty hot sauces uh, back on the road. Back then it wasn't, like now there's so many different hot sauces. Right. That's, uh, it's really a cool thing. There's so many different choices. Uh, so back then it was just, you know, I, I would just do a lot of pepper or, or Tabasco because that's what was around, you know, yeah. and especially in, in those, uh, unless we went to a certain restaurant, but they always had like, you know, your basic ones, you know, just your regular cayenne pepper sauces. And so didn't get to do it that much on the road. You know, you just eat wherever, wherever you can to stop, you know. Right, you're, right. You're eating a burrito, a, <laughs> micro, a microwave burrito. <laughs> Or Mayfu, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, um, I've been listening to your solo a- a- album. Uh, the Axis Rockstar to- Life, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been listening to your uh, solo album, Axes to Axes. Uh, great, great stuff. Great uh, singers you got on with you. Amazing people. And uh, the one person that, yeah. uh, um, Ronnie James Dio, man. God, what a, what a, what a voice. And uh, that song really kicks, man. That's awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah. I kind of wrote it with him in mind. Uh, it had like that kind of groove. And uh, it's funny because some people compared it to different songs, but I sort of got the inspiration from uh, Man in the Box, you know, that groove, bump, bump, you know. Yeah. So it was that same same kind of groove, uh, but that, that song kind of inspired that. And then I just wrote a melody that was very D.O.S.C. sort of to me. And, um, you know, I sent him the... Uh, the album, well, the, the tracks for him to put his vocal on it. And I just did like a rough vocal. And then when I got it back, like everybody, we played it in the studio and everybody's like, oh, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because it like the song just came to life, you know, with his voice on it. I mean, and, you know, I never knew at the time he, he wasn't sick. I never knew, you know, what an honor it was. I mean, it was an honor then, but the fact that I got to, work with him uh, on one song is something that's I'm very lucky I'll always yeah. treasure yeah oh. absolutely absolutely uh, uh, you know you got Rudy Sarzo yeah uh, uh, D uh, Snyder even sings uh, Eleanor Rigby on there what a great yeah. a great rendition of that that's that's fantastic it's it's a good album it's, a, it's an yeah, excellent that, album that, that song gets a different reaction some people say you think it's the greatest version they ever heard and then some people say, "How could you do that to a Beatles song?" <laughs> you know that. <laughs> you know, but it was like I was just joking around, like it was Iron Maiden. I said, "Well, how would Iron Maiden do it on Orbit Beat?" Right. So I just started dumb, dig it, dig it, I did like a gallop beat, and I said, and it, it was something that I started doing for fun. I said, "You know, this is pretty cool. I'm just going to do it." You know? Well, it worked. It worked so, very well. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know if Paul McCartney heard. Or what he would think of it, but he's pretty open-minded, you know. <laughs> well, just wish him a happy birthday, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. Anyway, I wish him a happy birthday today. You know? But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, he's a busy guy. He knows a lot of people, so. But I still sent him a happy birthday. Right, right. Just funny that I came up to. Yeah. Now, are you going to? Uh... Not every Father's Day is on this. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to get into uh, any more sauces? Are you going to make any more? Uh, I'm thinking, you know, a lot of people have been telling me about doing a ghost pepper sauce. Uh But um, I'm just going to keep it at this for now because having the three is keeping me pretty busy. I know that, uh, you know, some guys have a lot of, you know, they have so many sauces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as time goes on, uh, I'll see what happens with it. I'm pretty happy with uh, what I'm doing right now with the three. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's an expensive thing to do. They're not, you know, if you want to make good sauces, they're, they're, it can get pricey. Yeah. You know? So, uh, especially any, any kind of specialty sauces. So, uh -huh. um, I'm just trying to keep everything, uh, a good level that I can handle. Well, I love your new label because uh, I had your original one, uh, the original label that you had, and then you uh, uh, rebranded re it with uh, D on the um, label right. with you. Great, great move. Really nice label. I, but I, I kept your other one because you autographed it for me back when you first yeah. came out, and uh, I won't open that one. That one's still sitting in the shelf, so I, I've got that one. Yeah, I think I, I think you know I think my wife gave away the last one I had because I wanted to save one, you know, because <laughs> you know it was a different, you know, you want to save the label, right? Uh, so you know maybe it will become like one of those things, like oh, you know, collectible, I guess. I yeah, know. why not? It's funny. I mean, I like that one, but uh, I had started working with other people, and uh, they, they thought about redesigning the label. And at first, you know, they wanted to put the whole band on there. I said, well, I can't put the whole band on it. It's my hot sauce. And then right. I spoke to, to, and plus it's a small bottle. You're not going to see five guys on it, you know. And also, if the band is involved, then it would be different. And, you know, so D just said, why don't you just, you know, take a, you know, get a picture with the two of us. And that would be cool. So that's for now, you know. Um, I may change it up a little bit later, you know. But, uh I'm glad you like it. I, I, I like the label. I yeah. really like this one because sort of pops a little more, especially with the whole bullseye concept. You know? Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, now, um, do you still keep a, a lot of contact with D? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, usually, usually I talk to him uh, like once a month. Usually we just text each other and say, nice. how, you, how you doing, asshole? You know, <laughs> Are you guys going to, do you think you'll ever get back together to uh, play some more? Or? Well, you know, we this, we may do like a special thing here and there, but um, the touring is something that, you know, we you know, we, we originally got back together. We did the 9-11 benefit, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and uh, then all these offers started coming in. And we originally were going to do it for like five or six years, but we ended up doing it for 13 years, wow. you know. Or more, I'm thinking. It was 20, 30, 30, uh, yeah, 13 years, which is good. I'm not complaining because I mean, now with with the music business, uh, the, the only way to really support yourself is to play live. Yeah. I mean, that's why that's why everybody's out there because you know you put some you put out an album and it's all over the internet the next day, you know, yeah. and with, with, you know, which is it's definitely hurt the, the music industry and a lot more than the film industry, you know, because. You can't download a big screen, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so the movies, there's still something about, even though people get movies before they come out, you know, two weeks, I don't know how they get copies, but it's still the experience of going to the movie theater, the popcorn, you know, and, uh, you know, outside of going to a Broadway show or something, it's a pretty cheap night out, you know? So yeah. it's, uh, so that'll always, it didn't hurt that industry as much as the music industry, but, you know, People that uh, just do music, it's hard. I mean, you sell a million albums, you're like the man, you know, yeah. or, or the woman. But, uh, you know, even if you sell 50,000, 100,000, you know, CDs, that's a big thing now. Back in the day, if you sold less than 500,000 records, you got dropped. Right. You know, by a record company back in the 80s. You know, like uh, you had to go gold at least. Right? So. You know, one thing, uh, I, I, I guess this is probably showing my age, but the one thing I miss about albums was the inserts. You know, you could yeah. take it out. You, you uh, had something physical you could hold in your hand. You could read it. And uh, it felt like you were part of what was going on because it was such a unique thing to have. And I think that really has uh, uh, tarnished the music in a way because – you could just download yeah. it. You don't get the feeling and what what the artist wanted to give to you. You know the it was just such a neat thing to have that that physical yeah because sleeve. It was a full size picture, especially sometimes. I mean, we always had the lyrics on the inside uh, cover, right? 
you know, so it was cool when you could read the lyrics along and listen to the music, you know, or exactly that when you had an album on, you had something to read. Now you need a magnifying glass, you know, to to see who did what, you know. Right, right. <laughs> because it's tiny. I mean, it's a little CD, you know. It's uh, I mean, I know the quality's there, but there was something about albums. That they're sort of like the people are still collecting albums, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's become a collector's thing now. You know, like uh, I think Amoeba in the Cal- in L.A. is still going pretty strong. Amoeba Records, I don't know if you've ever been there. No, uh-uh. uh it's, it's like a store that has uh, all vinyl, you know. They, they, I think they have some CDs, but it's a pretty amazing place if you go there. And uh, if you ever go to L.A., most people will stop in there if they're, you know, if they're music fans. Right. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's neat. One of the only places you can get albums now. And they have old stuff sometimes used, uh-huh. uh, you know, sealed. I have the Mot- this Motorhead album now that Lemmy this that he, Lemmy gave me, and it's one with the leather cover, the one with the leather cover. Really? Yeah, that's like that's a collectible. That's definitely. Oh yeah. Cool. Keeping that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I didn't even know they made that one. That's that's really neat. Yeah, it was, it's a leather cover. Um. Yeah, it was a limited edition, but uh, it was nice of him to, you know, he gave us all one. Nice. You know? Yeah, we used to hang out a little bit in England together. So, in fact, he was one of the first, when we opened, the first time we played in England, we opened up for Motorhead. Wow. And we we said, they're going to kill us, man. You know, <laughs> we were wearing makeup. Right. But, you know, but Lemmy came out and introduced us, and everybody was cool. You know, they picked just didn't matter the makeup thing because we you know our makeup was it wasn't really glam makeup it was more like hid hideous kind of makeup it was you know you know my thing was kind of like a war paint right look that's the look i was going for and you know d was like you know the mad jack-in-the-box kind of look i don't know it's uh (laughs) you know so we all had uh it was a different thing it wasn't because people said, you know, glam rock, and I think we were far from that, <laughs> even though we wore makeup. Right. I I, I think one of my uh, first times that I seen uh, uh, Twisted Sister, besides, uh, you know, in, in videos or, or on the album covers, I think the first video I seen that I just went, oh, wow, this is so cool, is uh, uh, yeah. Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. It was like such a shock to see you guys in that movie, and it was like so cool. It was you couldn't have been placed in a yeah. better spot. It was really neat. It was great. I have a funny story about that because I was one of the first guys to get there on the set, and I met Pee Wee Herman right the first time. He's in the trailer, so as him and um, you know what's the director Richard Richard uh, uh, Burton. What, what's the uh, What's the director's name again for uh, Pee Wee Herman? Burton. Tim Burton. Tim, Tim Burton. Burton, yes. That was Tim Burton's first uh, dictatorial debut. Oh, really? Is it dictatorial, is that correct? Anyway. Yeah, that was the first movie he ever directed. And he had, uh, and, you know, the claymation stuff that he does. You, right. You know, if you could see in that movie, it's like classic Tim Burton stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, all those, those little dark things that he does. Like large Marge and everything, so yeah. uh, you know. So I met him, and that was before he began. Now he's like massive, you know. But uh, and that people who heard in movie was the the biggest one. I mean, it's become it's become a classic. It's constantly being played, uh, you know, on TV over and over again. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you know, it's funny because I still get a residual check once once in a while from that one scene. It's a real small amount of money. It'll be like ten bucks, but yeah. you know, for te- for so many years, this movie was made over thirty five years ago. You know, thirty three years ago. Wow. And you know, to still get, uh, you know, a little Pee Wee Herman big adventure with a check is, you know, I can go out and buy a couple of, you know, cans of soup with it. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he must be getting a nice check. You know, him and Tim Burton. Right. It's, it's, said it's a classic oh absolutely and it gets aired a lot but, but anyway my funny story was they had 10 people herning bikes 
you know, so I just sold, and I, I love bike riding. So I sold the 10 bikes. So me, I get on one of the bikes, and I'm riding around the lot, like, like just having a grand old time, you know. And these two guys come after me yelling, get off the bike, what's the matter with you, you lunatic? You know, I'm like, I said, what's the big deal? You got 10 of them. He says, those cost like $10,000 a piece. I said, well, you got to beat and that's a lot of money, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was just amazing to me, like that. Uh, you know, they they made a big deal. I mean, now I understand right. why they had to have ten of them because I'm sure they trashed a few. But I absolutely, didn't, you know, I didn't think there was anything wrong. I, you know, right now, I get, you know, but man, they really yelled at me, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a bike you're thinking, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying there's 10 of them. It's like, you know, let me take a ride, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ride the Pee Wee Herman bike. Oh, that's cool. Now, yeah. See, that was, that's a pretty good one. You know, that's, a, that's one for the books, you know? Oh, absolutely. We've got a lot yeah. of people uh, watching, and uh, a lot of people are saying a lot of great things about you. Uh, awesome. it, it's really a great, great audience we got here. Uh, hear no evil, see no evil. <laughs> Uh, uh, from uh, from the show, uh, Twisted Sister videos are awesome. Back in the when MTV showed videos, that's true. Absolutely, that was that was some yeah. of the best times, yeah. man. Yeah. And uh, there, it's it's you know, speaking to you brings back a time that was music was my heart, you know. And uh, it, it's it, uh, you and I grew up kind of in the same uh, uh, time when music was was king. I mean. It's it's really changed a lot since then, and and yeah, yeah. I, I to make the leap from music to the hot sauce. Uh, it's kind of the same way that I notice with all these people, the way they work together, and the and the songs, and, and you know, you're you're taking something that you want to write, and taking something that you feel, and putting it out to people and having them enjoy it. And, and every time I, I do this, try somebody else's sauces, it, it really is such a great flavor and such a great feeling to try to understand what they wanted to uh, produce and give to people. And, and it's got to yeah. be somewhat rewarding to you to, to hear that people like your stuff now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get amazing responses. Uh, you know, like people saying you know, they think it's one of the best – sauces they've ever tried you know and you know what's better than hearing that you know and, yeah because uh, there's a lot of hot there's a lot of hot sauces out there but i think one of the main reasons is because i did all fruit bases uh -huh. fruit based sauces and a lot of people don't really uh do that they kind of stick to the traditional hot sauce thing so you know i wanted to do something fruity right <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of your hot sauces, uh, we're going to do a giveaway. Eddie's got a three-pack of his hot sauces he's going to autograph for you. So it, you can pick a number between 1 and 50, and the first person to pick the number that we have agreed on before the show will get these sauces sent to you. And uh, I tell you what, you got to if, – if you don't win these – Get these sauces; they are amazing, and you can tell there's been a lot of thought and a lot of uh, care gone to, into these. This just wasn't just throwing some stuff together. The the medley, no. me, the medley of flavors that work together so well. You, you've really done a fantastic job. And in, in my uh, nice. review, nice. when I said uh, I, I I don't give you know full tens. All right, we already got a winner. We have already got a winner. <laughs> uh, Canoe Gator Steve has won the sauces, so thank you very much. Uh, but when, in my interview, as soon as I, uh, you know, I said, uh, it's not, you know, I don't give everybody a, a 10, and for me to give every one of yours, it just totally blew me away because the freshness, the uh, mixture yeah. of flavors, nothing is overpowering each other. It's it's a fantastic 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 job you've done on them and uh Thanks, i gotta commend Thanks. you very much and i I've, I've shared the ones that i've had with everybody and uh tell you what they don't last long because they're just that good it, it truly are yeah i have uh you know i have regular customers um you know this they, every month they go through you know three bottles right you know, uh, which is uh more than i go through sometimes yeah you know, and, you know it's just like amazing and i've had people 
that you know that I've given some to, and they hide it from their roommates, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So I have to hide it because I leave my uncle. You know, yeah. I'm like, it's pretty funny hiding hot sauce, but uh, it's like you know people used to hide other stuff, but not never their hot sauce. You know? <laughs> we've we've gotten older, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Those days are going, you know, a long gone. The, yeah. uh, those, those, those up all night days, yeah. But, no. but honestly, <laughs> would you would you trade them for the world? No, no. I mean, it was you know, it, the eighties was a definitely a cool decade. It was a wild, absolutely, uh, very entertaining. I mean, uh, like like one of the guy people mentioned, the videos back then were. Just real entertaining, you know. It was a, uh, it was a good mix of stuff, you know. And now you're just getting, it's more just pop, straight up pop stuff that just that you're seeing. It seems like it's have. all contrived. It's all like uh, uh, industry put together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some good videos, you know. Definitely, uh, people like Beyonce, you know, she definitely makes great videos. But I just think uh, I kind of miss when they used to mix it up, like they had rock, funk, they had different artists, you know, yeah. different types of music, you know, and, and a lot of the rock stuff was always pretty funny, you know, like, um, so yeah, I, I kind of missed those days. I don't, you know, I, I don't watch MTV that much anymore, but, um, you know, VH1 classic still does pretty good. Yeah. With some stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of good to watch. If, you know, you want to get nostalgic, you know, right. but, uh, it's it's cool. The it's metal hour, <laughs> the eighties <80s> decade, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Headbangers ball, you know, the repeat of uh, Ricky yeah, Rock or Ricky Racket. Yeah, <laughs> great Rocket, days. Yeah. <laughs> great days, man. Uh, what's going to be next for uh, uh, Eddie Ojeda from uh, playing wise? Are you going to do any more? Uh, I'm probably going to just do uh, singles. Okay. I have like a, you know, I have a good albums worth of songs but i you know I've, I've got four where i got the basics basic tracks down and i just uh haven't had time to finish them and i, I don't know who i want to sing on it yet um uh, there's a guy i work with called andre van show and he did one of the uh vocals for one of the songs and you know we may have to redo it or i think uh you know i'm, I'm gonna see you know, maybe I'll talk to Sebastian Bach or someone about nice. doing something. Nice. You know, um, but you know, I like having different singers. On, on, you know, it's just a cool thing to do. Uh, so I, I'm probably going to just do singles because it's just a lot easier. An album is too much information now. You know, right. for if you put an album out, it's just too much for people to get into at one time. So I think if you do singles. And then when you have enough of them out, you just then you do your album, you know, just do a CD, you know. So it's uh, that's basically the the, the road I'm going to go down. And I'm helping my daughter too as well. You know, she's a singer. She's pretty helping in. Uh, she's more of a rock singer than a pop singer. Okay. So so she's trying to go down that route, and a lot of people want to try to make her do pop music and. Uh, you know, she's sticking to what she likes doing. So, what's uh, the name of her band? Great. She doesn't have a band right now, but okay. her name is uh, Michelle. Okay. Michelle Hada, Jada. Okay. And uh, you know, some people call her Mo, and uh, she's got some stuff on YouTube. Uh, that's she was in a band called um, Curbside Hustle when she lived in New York. Uh, they were a pretty good band. Uh, there was a male singer too. Uh, guy named Dan and he was I actually produced their album they did a CD nice uh, but it was a self-release you know and um, they still play locally but uh, she was I think she worked with them for maybe uh, maybe almost two years and uh, it was it was a great experience for her you know she's a real performer you know very natural too it's not like she doesn't move here and move there and do all these choreography things. She just does what she feels, you know. Um, yeah. Which, which is, which, it's just more natural, you know. She's, it's got, she's got it in the blood, you know. And she also, uh, she also works with costumes and she's, you know, 
her day gig is, you know, she loves doing it, like styling and costumes. And uh, she's working on, uh, I forgot, the, that horror show, you know, that uh, it's a big horror show. Lady Gaga was on it. Oh, okay. Something horror. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, um, house, house of Horrors or? Uh... No, something. What was, what was the name of that? I think of, I forgot what channel it was on. She tells me too. It's very famous. Uh, so now she's working with the, one of the costume people. She's her, her assistant. And um, I'll remember the name. American Horror that. Story. American Horror Story. Thank That's you, it. Melissa. <laughs> you just got help. There, yeah. Right? yeah she's, <laughs> she's having a blast working on that. And she's, uh, you know, and luckily she's been getting going from one job to another with uh, and getting a lot of experience with um, doing costumes and and working on sets it's an exciting thing because it's not she's like me i you know i can't be in an office i like stuff that was the good thing about being a musician like every day was different you know no two shows were ever the same right you know, um and that's exciting you know i mean i've worked in, a, in an office and i've done that and every day going to the same place the same desk seeing the same people you know eating at the same time it's just not for me, you know, and, and when you work on uh, movie sets or you know, any kind of series, it's it's an exciting place to be. It's very creative, too. So, um, you know, that's something that uh, if, the sing if this music thing doesn't happen, at least this is really working out well for her, too. So nice. And she's meeting a lot of great people, getting a lot of great experience, which uh, you can't beat that. You know? No, no. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Eddie, I, I want to thank you very much for coming on tonight. Uh, it's been a total pleasure talking to you. Been a fan for years, and uh, this has been a thrill for me, and I want to thank you very much. Uh, I, I I just want to really thank you. This has just been awesome. And uh, I'm sure everybody out there, uh, I didn't get to a whole lot of questions because I was uh, so so enthralled with what you were saying. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, people uh, people uh, are definitely loving what, what you have to say, and uh, – Great, great. It's really good. And uh, thank you again for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Okay, yeah. And send me uh, the winner's address, and uh, I'll take care of that. Awesome. Is there uh, anything else you want to uh, say at the uh, – uh, Well, whoever wants to, uh, you know, get the hot sauce, just go to twisted uh, twistedhotsauce.com. And I'm giving – if they buy, like, three bottles, they get a free – pick card nice see like the guitar picks pop out of this i don't know if you can see that yeah yeah we can see that see oh very cool so you can pop out the picks i'll show you what i mean see you have a guitar pick nice a cute little thing yeah that's you know, awesome and then you, you can use it to put makeup on it later <laughs> Awesome. Uh, and if, 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 if anybody forgets that uh, address, you can go to uh, the Taste in the Heat uh, Celebrity uh, Sauces page, click on the picture of Eddie, and you can hit the link and go right to his website. And uh, one more thing, uh, Enrique Monroe has got a hot sauce book coming out. Did you did you happen to get, uh, send your stuff to him to get into that book? Uh, no, no, no. I should send him some stuff. Let me get you hooked up with him after the show. And uh, okay. it'd be great to have your stuff in the book. He's got uh, hot sauces from all around the world. He's going to be publishing, and, and I'd love to see you in that. That'd be awesome. Definitely. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Eddie, thank you again. Uh, okay, uh, Kendall. This has been uh, fantastic. A lot of people have been enjoying what you were talking about, and uh, I'm sure we're going to uh, cross paths again because uh, uh, you're such a, such a great guy. and. Uh, Great musician, Likewise. great person, and uh, once again, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Same to you. Same to you. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Uh, this has been a total thrill for me. I hope you enjoyed it also. Until next week, remember, when you're out there, keep tasting the heat.